Hi, do we need to ask Jesus into our hearts to be saved? Is a lukewarm Christian better than someone who hates God? These questions and more will be answered in this short video. Stick around for the answers. At the end, I will share a passage that deals with having Jesus in your hearts. In Revelation chapter 2 and 3, John wrote to the seven churches of Asia Minor, now called Turkey. The church of Laodicea was the last of the seven churches. John refers to many things. Laodicea was actually a very rich town. It was the banking center of the whole area. Speaking of having it all. <laughs> they also had invented their own ointment for the health of their eyes. There were lots of stores there and everything you could possibly desire, you just went out and bought. When there was a huge earthquake there, the Roman Empire offered federal aid but they turned it down because they were so well up and didn't have need of anything. They did have one problem though, they didn't have clean water. They had to get it from their neighboring towns through pipelines. One was Colossae and the other Hierapolis. Colossae had very good tasting ice water and Hierapolis had hot springs. The problem with the water through the pipelines was that by the time it got the lay of the sea, it just tasted horrible. You just wanted to spit this lukewarm water out. Good water was actually such a precious commodity in Laodicea that the pro-council approved a law that if someone polluted the water supply by damaging the pipes, they would get a fine of 12,500 denarii which in today's money is over $40,000. Now the church in Laodicea was very active, but their activity wasn't worth much. It was not like wonderful hot or cold water. It was like disgusting lukewarm water. So God cannot use this. Would you want to drink filthy water with a horrible aftertaste? It'd be gross. And it's all happening because I'm completely ignoring every urge towards common sense and good judgment I've ever had. The Laodiceans were so rich though, they had everything. In some ways, they didn't feel like they really needed God. Jesus was outside of the church. Because of that, in reality, they were very poor. Life without Christ is deep poverty. So Jesus wants to be part of his church. This didn't mean that they weren't saved. It just meant that in the ministry, they began to rely on their own programs. It's a very easy trap to fall into. I've seen huge churches with huge programs, but the people weren't concerned about Jesus and many times not concerned about each other and the lost either. They just want their big, beautiful church services. But Christ is outside. I have a dear friend of mine who has 11 children and I don't know how many grandkids. Now, imagine if his huge family would celebrate his birthday, but he wasn't invited. That's what some churches are like. So this passage of Revelation 3 verse 20 does not mean anything relating to getting saved. It doesn't talk about your heart. It doesn't talk about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Even the word heart is not even used in the passage. To get saved, all we need to do is trust Christ as our Savior. Remember, Jesus said, verily, verily, amen, amen in Hebrew. He who believes in me has eternal life. He never said, he who asked me into his heart has eternal life. That's nowhere in the scriptures. Jesus took our sin, shame, guilt, and punishment. He died on the cross and rose from the dead. He is the Savior. All we need to do is trust in him to be saved. So the extra thing I promise. In Ephesians 3 verse 17 it says that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. The result of this will be that we all will be mature and know the love of God. That was written to the church of Ephesus, which actually isn't too far from Laodicea. As a church together, we can have Christ dwell within our hearts through faith. He needs to be the center. But one thing you need to do before watching his videos, and that is STLB. Smash the like button, totally destroy it. You'll be surprised what could happen. This channel might blow up.
in the meantime, thank you for watching. God bless you. Bye-bye.